kiss from your mother. Was that this morning? Yesterday? A week ago? Or perhaps even many years ago? Do you even remember whether or not you had one? Our universe has been steadily expanding ever since the Big Bang explosion nearly 14 billion years ago, like a balloon being inflated. We are growing further away from our neighboring galaxies all the time, and the distances between all the planetary objects are increasing every moment of every day, as far as we can estimate or know. So then, what does a kiss from a mother to her child mean in terms of light years? Scientists tell us that our planet Earth is about 4.5 billion years old, that the Earth's moon is at a distance of about 238,855 miles or 384,400 kilometers from the planet, and that this distance is increasing as the moon is retreating from the Earth at a rate of 1.5 inches or 4 centimeters every year. We have learned all these things in school and used this information almost every day to understand the world we live in, to build the bridges or the opera houses or the roads or the houses we live in and even for buying tomatoes. We can perceive the 1.5 inches or 4 centimeters and know that it is more or less the size of our little finger. But how long does it take to get there? And how much is half a million kilometers? How many feet or kilometers would take us from where we are now to another galaxy, which might have another life form, or to our ancestors in the past? or to ourselves in the future? What about other parallel universes or any other kind of place or time? How much of it might we perceive? And what would be our thoughts if we could see everything from where we are? Like God does. Would those thoughts really matter? Almost everything has happened here. Battles, wars, the diesel engine, the Milau viaduct. As far as we follow, we are born, we eat, we sleep, and inevitably, sooner or later, we die. Some say your memory is altered only after an event happens for real. Some say it's like a dream and remembering yesterday is like a picture. Some talk about electrical signals, or just signs, or other kinds of signal. When psychology, physiology, psychiatry, or anything else cannot explain what was or is really happening, and what is really real for everyone, when there is relativity in time, or whatever we call it, such perceived differences and comments are there for almost everything. Even when we don't know why we sleep. And our only logical answer is because we feel sleepy. And for some, the whole of life is over like a flash in the blink of an eye. How can one know and understand all this reality? If there are rules for being good, how can you follow them if nothing can be measured? Or anything, in fact, really matters in this big mass? So how do you measure a kiss? We hunted. We ate. We slept. The sun went up, and then it went down. We woke up. It seems we don't count all the possible big or small bangs in between, and everything related in size to the black holes. It was all in a way quiet, 
without anything very much happening for several billion years on our planet. If you ask a question, you must get an answer. And if you cannot find an answer, you yourself have to answer it. Here's one. Does your conscious mind interfere with your memories subconsciously? How can you know or follow? How can we measure, understand, know or decide how long something is? How big is the universe? What is all of this? What does it all mean? And what really matters when there is so much unknown? Better to say that there is a God and make him responsible for everything, from creation to unfairness, to balance, the minerals, the water, and the fish. You might have heard the joke about the question from God when we die. How was paradise? If everything is in reality, and it's about what we see, hear, feel, think, assume, know, and believe, how do you measure God? The Minoans, the Egyptians, the kings of Akkad, the civilization of China, reunifications, Shang, Jia, Hammurabi, Hiskos, Harapan, the Hittites, the Nubians, the Greeks, the pharaohs. What do you remember from your childhood? When did we put a man in a rocket and send him into space? You know what happened. We discovered fire. We made tools. We wove flax into fabric, tamed horses, developed a phonetic alphabet, made bronze, made paper, made many more things. In just a few thousand years, we built cities, states, then dynasties, and then they fought against each other. Troy was captured. The second Babylonian empire started. Iron was used for the very first time in Austria. The Greeks, the Romans, the Celts or Ottomans, the sun, the sky or the dawn, Muslim, Christian, Jew, Buddhist, atheist, or agnostic. We all believe in something. We built civilizations. We fell in love, betrayed, cheated, got sick, got well. We died, were born, had fights. Mothers, fathers, children, the children of children, of wolves, and of men. The Shang Dynasty vassal tribe, Chao, defeated the Shang Dynasty. Nubia became independent. Assyria collapsed. Etruria, King David, King Solomon, the Vanic Kingdom, Carthage, Rome, the fall of Samaria. Was there a reason? The Japanese Empire, Sparta, the Assyrian destruction of Babylon, Draco, Nineveh, Solon, Nebuchadnezzar, Pisistratus, Cyrus, Darius, Democracy, Aristagoras, Confucius, Naxos, Pericles, Hippocrates, the battles of Leuctra, of Issus, of Galgamela, of Ipsus. There was a reason. Euclid, Samos, Archimedes, the Great Wall of China, Judas Maccabeus, Hipparchus, Pompey's Quest, Julius Caesar, Cicero, Tiberius, Herod, Sinhan, Caligula, Nero, Kushan, Marcus Aurelius, Septimus Severus. We all had questions. The Battle of Chalons, the Battle of Carhe, Tatar warriors breaking through the Great Wall, Constantine, the Battle of Adrianople, dividing empires, the Battle of Mercer, the Battle of Argentoratum, Visigoths, windmills, Attila, the Saxons, Vandals, Britons, Shah. We all have questions. 
Between 1.8 billion and 800 million years ago, the fossil record looks so dull. So much so that the period is called the Boring Billion. One billion years. Not one minute, not one day, not a year, not ten, nor a hundred, a thousand, or even a million. One billion years of boredom and silence. It was all here. We haven't witnessed the birth of the Earth. We have theories, theses, books, research, many things to say, almost for everything from the beginning of time. The Big Bang, creation, design, the origin of life, evolution, the great oxidation event, endosymbiosis, plate tectonics, from one cell to the Cambrian explosion, from the fish walking onto land to mammals, primates, the extinction of the dinosaurs to photosynthesis. Do you know what happened? We have been in existence for only a fifth of a million years. During that time, we have spread from our place of origin in Africa to inhabit every continent and to reach even outer space. Our reckless and careless activities have already caused the extinction of many species of animals and birds and brought about a major and rapid climate change on Earth. Africa, the Middle East, Asia, Europe, North America, South America, Japan, China, the Ottomans, Australia, art, culture, reforms, technology, Nobel Prizes, the Oscars, sport, championships, battles, wars, world wars, and more wars. All that has happened in the recorded period of history has taken place during a very small fraction of our planet's existence. Yet we cannot remember everything exactly from our childhood days, or nights, or even from yesterday. What happened, exactly when? If we could only perceive all of this, we would still not understand the concept of time and why we are here. But we have all the answers. We say this happened in that year, this happened in this year. We have perhaps 70 to 80 years in this world as our lifetime. 50 years from now, what will you remember from today? How and what do we know about? Or how could we measure the years, months, weeks or days if the sun didn't move and there was no night or day? The education system we use today was mainly shaped after the 18th century and we started to award ourselves degrees in order to get jobs for production. Daily lives and lives in general, how we live, our time shaped before we were born. When to work, what could and should be proper work for us, why we work and what we work for is shaped and specified. Most of us are born into it, molded by it. The cars we drive, the holidays we enjoy, the things we think and believe in, were already shaped and are being shaped every day by others, by us. Smartphones, social networks, the internet. Everything was suddenly exciting. A more digital, a more diverse, a more shaped life. We went from slapping each other's backs as apes to tagging each other digitally on social networks. Guns and roses. What would a child matter to its father? The advanced scientific and technological revolution which started in the 1950s with the creation of computers and after the 1990s with the internet and at the start of the new millennium with social networks and smartphones. All these things started the Internet of Things, 
and they all made the revolution faster. Some said we'd get chipped, counted and categorized, and digitalized and used. Nothing happened. We just went forward. A few decades later, it is all so fast that even with the support of new inventions, all that is happening on Earth, all the processes become harder to follow and events become difficult to catch, to record or to remember. Face transplants, nerve transplants, head transplants, playing with memories, playing with genomes of vegetables, animals, and then humans. All went like a snowflake to a snowball, and then an avalanche. The gap between rich and poor, smart and not so smart, has become wider and wider, and perceptions, paradigms change in waves. Big, fast, demolishing waves. Economic crises shape nations, dividing them, creating new ones, turning, twisting, small-scaled and big-scaled, never heard of, fake or real, all published wars, media, news, icons, follows, unfollows, likes, who cured the diseases, who started them already, who became big, who traveled far, who came back, who created everything, and we couldn't follow them ourselves, all us. It didn't matter how far the moon was anymore. Music, poetry, banks and money, alien abduction, nuclear wars or oil spills, barcodes, bigger businesses, tsunamis, charismatic leaders, wars big and small and more, great or small walls between countries or people or the police or the mother and child, politics, power groups, conspiracy theorists, Freemasons, Brazil, Canada, Illuminati, Nosferatu, Paganini, nothing really mattered. How far was the moon? Did that really matter while it was already working? The whole system? What we believe in, or assume, or estimate, or the questions and answers about us, all that matters some estimated years ago, changed, altered, forgotten, updated. Children were born. Old men died. After a while, we didn't know what was born or what is dying already. It didn't happen one day. We had days and nights so long, so quick. On one of those days, we woke up into a world that is more industrialized than ever, more advanced, more categorized for everything, more orderly, more under control, and more regularized, just as we always wanted. We built this and that, and then the petroleum sources ran out. Then we stopped playing with currencies and found new sources and new resources instead. We invented things. We ended things. Water gained importance. And then we consumed all of that too. We made the meat, designed the sleep. Monetary systems, world wars, failed, won, ceased, ended, started, did their duties and became another part of history. If anyone remembers, we consumed each other people to people, one nation to another. Expansion went on like it always did. Some people went under the surface, built their lives there. Some went up into the skies, and some were left behind. 
Some genes survived in this way, some populated in that way, some mixed for a reason by some other parts of us, some mixed for no reason. We, in general, in time and place, as we always did, survived from one to another, in place and time, at least some of us. If you believed in some god, he tried to continue making new souls for the new bodies who could witness what is left, up to a point. Did we wage wars on poverty, explore the universe, and cure diseases? Do you believe there was and still is a god when things happen? to regulate everything, or just to watch and hope that good will always win? If people could still be born, not produced, and we had light already in our lives, if we could be sure about the black forests, if the trees were free to grow naturally, and if the crows were still free to fly in their instinctive ways, and if what flows in the rivers was still the pure water, could we know and measure how blue is a blue sky? And what it means to an army ready for war, waiting for the signal to attack? A bright, sunny day in all human history. How would you define religion, war, economics, family, friendship, and love. If you were produced without a mother or a father, and born into a motherless surface without light, full of dangers and darkness, and if all these shaped before you, how could you measure, before knowing humanity, what makes humans human? How would you know what is happening between a mother's kiss and what part of you would stay with it after you had already gone? Under the dark sun.